So recall, there are five different types of numbers that you should, should know. We've got the whole numbers, the integers, the rational numbers, the irrational numbers, and the real numbers. We looked at examples of those and defined each of those in a previous screencast. Now we want to look at a Venn diagram to see if we can understand the relationship between these five different types. So the largest set among these five is the set of real numbers. So this blue bubble here represents the set of all real numbers. This is our setting for doing our algebra. We will not be doing any algebra outside of the set of real numbers. We're going to be just inside the set of real numbers. First, you've got the real numbers. Again, they are any number that can be written or approximated by a decimal. Now, this set is split in two, not evenly in two, but it's split in two. Each real number is either a rational number or an irrational number. No number is, no real number is both of them, and no real number is anything else. They're strictly rational or irrational. Remember, the rational numbers are the decimal expansions that either stop or have an infinite repeating pattern. The irrational numbers are the decimal expansions that go on forever, the infinite decimal expansions, and they have no repeating pattern whatsoever. Most all of our work is going to be done over here in the rational real number world, not so much over in the irrational real number world. Again, for example, pi and root 2 are two examples of irrational numbers. They play a very important role. If we were studying circles, we'd see pi. If we were talking about the diagonals of squares, we would see something like root two, but that's not part of this course. So irrational numbers are real numbers, but we're not doing too much work over here. Almost all of our work will be over here in the set of rational real numbers. But we also have these two words, and these two words, whole numbers and integers, these are both special types of rational numbers. Remember, integers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc., and the opposites of those. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, blah, 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 forever. So those are examples of rational, num rational numbers because the decimal expansion stops. Number 11 is 11.0, or number negative 3 is negative 3.0. It stops. So the rational numbers, or the integers, are a subset of the set of rational numbers. And then finally, we have the whole numbers. The whole numbers are a subset of the integers. The whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. Those are all integers. So the set of whole numbers is inside the set of integers. It's a subset of the set of integers. So for example, if you had a whole number like 22. 22 is a whole number. It's also an integer because that 22 is inside the integer bubble. It's also a rational number because it's inside the rational bubble, and it's also a real number because it's in the real number bubble. However, it is not an irrational real number. This is the setting for where we are going to be doing all of our algebra. We're going to be working with the set of real numbers. If any of you have seen something like i, that's an example of a non-real number. Uh, that is not part of our uh, this class. It is an important part of algebra, but not the algebra that we're doing in this particular class. Let's now look at a typical quiz type question to see if you can classify different numbers. So what we want to do is look at each of these six numbers here, and we want to classify them according to these five types, whole, integer, rational, irrational, and real. Right? If for a particular number, if it's three of these, we want to write down all three of them, not just one of them. You want to put down all the possible labels on a particular number. So let's look at each of these individually and see if it applies to, if these five apply to that particular number. So is negative 8.15 a whole number? No, because first of all, it's negative. There are no negative whole numbers. Is it an integer? No, because its decimal expansion is 0.15. It's not 0. 0.0. Is it rational? It is a decimal, but it's a decimal that stops, so it is, in fact, rational. Once you know that it's rational, it can't possibly be irrational. Real numbers are either rational or irrational, not both. So it can't be irrational as well, but it's certainly a real number. So negative 8.15 can be classified as both a rational number and a real number. 
How about square root of 2? Well, square root of 2 is certainly not whole. It's not an integer. It's also not rational. It's one of those special irrational numbers that we're not going to deal with too much in this class beyond what we're doing right now. It's an irrational number, and since it's an irrational number, it's also a real number. So it's root 2 is an irrational real number. Negative 7, it's also not a whole number because the whole numbers aren't negative. However, it is an integer. There is no decimal expansion on it, or it would be negative 7.0. So it's an integer, and if it's an integer, if you just think about the Venn diagram we created on the previous screen, if it's an integer, that means it's also rational, because the integer bubble is inside the rational bubble, and that means it's also real, because it's inside the rational, uh, the rational bubble is inside the real bubble. So negative 7 is an integer, it's rational, and it's real. 27 fourths, for example, is 27 fourths as a decimal is 6.75. 6.75 is a decimal expansion that stops. So it's not whole, it's not an integer, but it is rational because it stops. Of course, again, it can't also be irrational. It's one or the other. And if it's rational, it's also real. Square root of 25, be careful. Just because you saw a square root, don't automatically assume that this is irrational and real as well. Remember, we want the simplified versions of things. Square root of 25 is actually just 5. So 5 is not irrational at all. Its decimal expansion is 0. 0.0. So let's go back through. It's Once you go at, look at the simplified form, the square root of 25 is 5. 5 is a whole number. It's also an integer, a rational number, and it's also real. Because remember, if you look back, Whole numbers are inside the integer bubble, the integer bubble is inside the rational bubble, and the rational bubble is inside the real bubble. So there's four ways of classifying this. So basically, general rule of thumb here is if the square root is of a non-perfect square, for example, 2 is not a perfect square, but 25 is a perfect square, if it's not of a perfect square, then the square root is irrational. If it's of a perf perfect square, then it simplifies to a nice positive integer or non-negative integer, and it's a whole integer, rational, and real. And then 47.0, this is also a whole number because it's really just 47. It's, it's one of the counting numbers. So 47, it's also an integer, rational, and real for the same reason that this was a whole number, integer, rational, and real. So you should be able to classify numbers based on their type. There's one more question here. Which of the following numbers can be negative? If it can be negative, give a specific example. So can the whole numbers be negative? Well, note they're the counting numbers along with 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there are no negative numbers. So this can't be negative. Can integers be negative? Yeah, it's the whole numbers and their additive opposites, the negative versions of them. So for example, negative 7 is an integer. Can rational numbers be be a negative. Of course, it's just a decimal expansion that either stops or has an infinite repeating pattern. So for example, negative one-third is rational because negative one-third is negative 0 0.3 repeating. If it's, it's an infinite decimal expansion with a repeating pattern, can irrational be numbers, neg numbers be negative? Sure. Negative pi. Pi is irrational, so negative pi is also irrational. You can only approximate, approximate it with a decimal. And then, of course, real numbers can certainly be positive or negative. And just one more example, uh, we'll go with negative 4,342.81927. Any number that can be written as or approximated by a decimal is considered a real number.